Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is a Let Me Bore You To Sleep I think, I think, 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 think this is number 50, which is, apart from the relaxation sessions, because I used to number them years ago, but this is the most amount of any uh, courses or series of sessions I've ever done. That's nicer. I've lived on my own so long that things like picking my ears and I'm so used to doing that, I forget that there's people watching. It's just an itch. Sometimes you've got to scratch an itch. It's itching because it needs to be scratched. You get hungry because you need to eat. You get thirsty because you need to drink. So that's how I see itches as you either need to scratch it or seek medical help, you know, depending on on where it is and how long it lasts, I suppose. So only watch this video or listen to this audio when you can safely close your eyes because it may cause drowsiness. And I was speaking to someone, I was doing a, a live broadcast last night on Facebook and uh, a lady called Fiona said that listening to me was making her feel sleepy. And I said, well, this isn't a sleepy session. And she just pointed out that listening to my voice having listened to the, oh no, it was something else, no, it's listening to, I think it was maybe hypnotic buffets. Anyway, uh, it was a case of the connection between my voice and feeling sleepy and falling asleep. It seemed to be that connection was there. definitely fall asleep myself actually I might do I might just uh... mm -hmm. we could go to sleep together so I've got the light on just in front of me that's why it's so bright and Andre's just poked his head out of the bag. And he's looking at me. I think he, he's wondering why is it so bright in here. And maybe it's time for dinner. But I can't get him dinner when I'm sitting here talking to you. So it might be about an hour. Until you get your dinner. He's coming out anyway. You can come and give me a cuddle if you want, Andre. Come and say hello to people watching if you want. So I'm quite pleased with my beard. It's growing. It's doing its thing. Um, it's going to be very, very, very huge beard. It's going to be... Yeah, Uncle Albert. It's going to be an Uncle Albert beard. And I'm thinking of letting my hair grow really long. So I might have to get myself a hat to wear while it's going through that uh, I'm not sure what the correct word is, but
uncomfortable to look at stage, I suppose, where it's just, my hair is just going to be sticking out in all directions. And at the moment, I know you perhaps you can't see it, but at the, at the moment, it's starting to curl at the sides. It's already getting curly at the top, at the front. Although the front is a bit higher up than it used to be. I'm sure my fringe used to be about there. That's where my hairline used to be. Now it's... It's a little bit higher. But I don't mind things like that. It's, I think it look a bit strange if at my age I still looked 17 it would be it would be unusual imagine if I had a 17 year old's face and head with this body you know I have to have a this is not a flattering t-shirt at all. Look, looks like I've got, looks like I need a bra. You wouldn't believe it, but this is not all muscle. So, Andre looks so cute. He's just laying out of his bag. So he's, he's up to his waist out of the bag. So the rest of his body's in the bag. And he's stretched out and he's like that. And he's just resting on his, on his hands, he's got his eyes closed, his little ears, so cute. Sometimes I just look at him and I just like looking at him, he's so beautiful. Just everything about him is just so beautiful, such a cute, cute little boy. And then he starts misbehaving. And uh, some of the things that he does to misbehave is, and these are things that he seems to want to do in the middle of the night, you know, three or four in the morning. He suddenly get up out of his sleep and I'll perhaps be watching television or doing something and I'll hear scratching and banging so I'll go in and it'll be my wardrobe he likes to scratch at the door open the door of the wardrobe from underneath but just keep letting it bang and bang and bang and bang and bang and then he gets inside the wardrobe and the door closes and he starts pushing the door and scratching at the door and banging and banging and banging it. And he's not trapped in there, he can get out at any point. He just enjoys the process of going in and out, out of a door. Imagine if we could all be that satisfied with such things. We would need the internet or television or crayons or Lego or whatever it is that um, interests you. It's the noise that's a bit annoying. Another thing he likes to do and he may, he, he may well start doing it even while we're talking. But, and he's ruined a few sessions doing that over the years, is it'll start, he's got a, a cat scratcher, which has got a, it's a big brown thing. And he can climb on it and there's, the, there's a, an entrance to it and he can sleep inside it as well. But every now and then he has a good old scratch it's really noisy and sometimes you do it when I'm making a session but 
the only alternative is to put him into the bedroom and it's okay if it's for 20 minutes but I don't want to put him in there for an hour um, I didn't get him to lock him up you know it's I know he's got a cage and I put him in there in the evenings like not the evenings but when it when I go to bed I put him in the cage and the only reason for that is because he disturbs me when I'm asleep he start rattling the the wardrobe or sometimes he'll climb onto me and he'll start nibbling nibbling my hands definitely he likes to so have a little bite of my toes which isn't great and then sometimes to wake me up he'll actually he'll start licking my ear and nibbling on my ear and then he bites just around my eye it's just to wake me up because he wants to play there's no other reason for it that I can think of unless he's trying to eat me which I hope, hope not and he does that sometimes during the day if I've gone for a sleep I lay down which I do sometimes and I have to keep my socks on because otherwise he'll, he'll start nibbling on my toes. He's got a foot fetish. It goes for everybody's feet, everybody. Doesn't matter if you're an adult, child, man, woman, uh, even if you're a dog, it goes for your feet. He's, he just loves feet for some reason. I don't understand why. I actually was lying there one day and because he, he climbs onto the ch onto the bed but he has to sometimes he has to make a few attempts because he has to sort of clear onto something to climb up and I was just laying there and I kept my eyes closed and then I kind of opened you know when you open your eyes a little bit you can see through your eyelashes but you're not your eyes aren't completely closed a bit like when you're on a first date and you just the person's getting undressed and maybe and or the, maybe not the first date but you know yeah it might be a romantic relationship and you kind of you got your eyes closed but you got your eyes you are kind of looking through just to make sure there is I don't know, there's just everything's as it should be. No hidden surprises. But that's been a long time for me. So he's lying there. So what should I talk about today? So the point of these uh, let me bore you to sleep sessions is that I just talk about stuff. Just talk. Talk and talk and talk and talk and talk again. This t-shirt really isn't giving me the best uh, angle of my body. Never mind. So, the idea behind these recordings, videos, whatever, is that we've all met somebody, I'm guessing, we've all met somebody that likes to talk. And it might be someone that you really care about, and you know it's not. It's it's not kind of a a negative thing, but sometimes perhaps they like to talk about a particular subject that you have zero interest in. So you know you might have a great relationship in any other whatever other part of that relationship, 
when they start talking about goldfish or the the history of cement it just and they can talk about it for hours and even though they might be talking about it with enthusiasm and pie charts and you know they might have videos to show you and it's just maybe a little bit hard to keep your eyes open and to you know to try and stop a yawn I mean one way I suppose if you do yawn just try and cover it up just tell them that um, you're just bored but that's probably that's could be rude but it's or you could just say you're tired. I'm yawning because I'm tired. Or you could give a hint. You could sort of say, well, do you mind if I record you talking about the uh, all the different colours of the various budgies around the world? So can I record you talking about it? And if they say why, you can say, well, because... Uh, I think it's going to help me to sleep so when I can't sleep I'll play that and I'll be able to get to sleep really quickly and easily and safely feel relaxed and calm and just drift off I don't know how that would go down um, so this is kind of a, an alternative to that so instead of asking someone that you care about if you could if you can take the talking about their travels, you know, instead of saying, well, can you tell me more about your your round-the-world trip and all the different destinations and you went on and can you tell me more about how you feel it's changed your life and, and I'll tape it so that I can get to sleep easier when I'm you know when I need to can I can I film can I film you and tape you showing me the photographs from your wedding so you know when I've got a bit of insomnia I can you know drift off nicely Some people might class that as rude. So I'm kind of the the alternative to that. So you know the idea you you really like somebody. It might even be a first, like a, a new relationship, or your husband or wife or. You know you, can, you know, you really like them. And you've been invited to go round to a friend's house to I don't know, maybe to oh, here's an idea. Maybe you, you've met someone that you really like and you meet their parents maybe for the first time and one of the parents decides to get the photo album out and they want to show you pictures of the person that you've just met and maybe you really like them but pictures of them since they were a baby and Instead of saying to them, well, can I just take the photograph album or the 17 photograph albums home with me so uh, whenever I'm struggling to sleep, I can look through them and fall asleep really easily because that might come across as mildly um, rude, possibly. You can listen to me talk about the idea of how boring that would be to look at pictures 
of anything, really, for more than a few minutes. For some people are like photographs. My brother's girlfriend, who was at a wedding, not his, but uh, he, he was at the wedding with me. And he was with his girlfriend. And he was getting annoyed. Well, not annoyed, not really angry, but just because she liked to keep taking photographs of everything. So I was encouraging her. In fact, I took her aside. Because he hasn't, hadn't told her that he didn't really like photographs. And I took her aside. I said, you know what? The thing is, he doesn't tell many people, but he absolutely loves having photographs taken of him. The more, the more, the, the happier he is. He can't get enough. He keeps it quiet. But it's something that he absolutely adores you know he likes to have like at least 10 20 photographs you know just every time just so we can get the right right picture he likes to keep all those photographs you know he'd, he'd be happy to he always wanted to be a model just so he could have cameras facing him all the time I didn't tell him that I told her that, but he did question. He said, how come suddenly she's taking even more pictures of me? All I wanted to do was go to the toilet. Didn't expect her to come in with me. So yeah, it was, so there's something like that, pictures, to looking at pictures, it's boring to you then you know instead of telling someone you could listen to me talking about people taking pictures and people that are bored looking at pictures I remember there was there was once I was at this uh Thing. I won't go into details what it was, but we basically, um, it was what, six of us, and we all just needed to do a presentation. And it was a personal thing, so I kind of, everyone did a small presentation. And one of the people in there, he started reading. And it was like a, an essay. It wasn't his essay, it was someone else. But he was reading it. So he didn't, it wasn't personal at all. He just read someone else's work. That was one of the longest 20 minutes of my life. It went on. And on. Or he went on. And on. And on. And on and on and 20 minutes listening to somebody especially when you don't know when it's going to end when you don't know when something's going to end sometimes it just seems to last longer and If I'd have laid down, or if I'd have known he was going to do that, I took a sleeping bag with me. But if I had took a sleeping bag with me and laid down and kissed everyone good night, you know, did a little rain dance, whatever, you know, what we all do before going to sleep. Put cream on my knees. So it's just basically, it possibly would be rude to do that. Still don't think it would have distracted him from reading. He was determined to finish 
the way it started. And that's kind of what I'm doing. But you can see how long it lasts at the beginning because you can look at the length of you can see the length before you decide what to do with it, you know? So if this is an hour long, you can see it's an hour long. So you're not sitting there or lying down thinking, oh, when's this gonna end? Oh, I mean, you might not go, ooh. You might go, ah. Oh, when's this gonna end? You might not go, ah, oh, either. But that's kind of what these sessions are about, just me talking just a bunch of words making up sentences and some of it may be meaningful some of it may not be meaningful some of it may be true some of it may not be true some of it may be things that I believe in some things may just be me messing about. And none of it really matters because it's all about being boring. I could spend the next 30 minutes talking about the first time I purchased pair of socks on my own or the first time that you know I discovered that what is it called it's a shower gel but it's minty it's like not doesn't taste minty it smells minty but it, it's it leaves the minty um, feeling on your body even after the shower has come to a close. It's still that um, feeling, tingly, tingly feeling of that shower gel on your body even though you've washed it off and you've rinsed it off your body and there's that smell it's not just the smell it's the the feeling on your body and wondering if other people also have that same reaction to that minty or spearmint shower gel I can't recall what it's called is it some organic or um, but if you have used it you will know what I mean and you'll understand what I'm you'll understand what I'm not saying if that makes sense so I used to use it quite a lot, I used to like it, but I have baths now anyway, because when I first moved in here, into this flat, I I fell out of the bath, I'm not sure if I, I was having a shower, I forget now, but I fell out of the bath, and uh, I actually broke my wrist, so I... I prefer baths now. Plus, I do like showers sometimes, especially if it's really, they're really powerful. I don't mean good at running businesses or you're a politician. I mean, they're powerful 
at the, the pressure of the water, especially on the top of my head, and especially after maybe uh, a workout, you know, going to the gym or something like that. The back of the, yeah, also the back of the neck and the shoulders. And then the back as well, my back, and the back, my back. The, the top, the middle and lower back, I suppose, just. A really powerful, full on. It's a kind of, kind of jet, a pressure that I wash my hair, but kind of wonder if there, there'll be any hair left because of the, the pressure they've just blown my hair away but it never did it never did so that's kind of what these sessions were about I realise now this this video is just me talking about what the video is about and I'm not sure what else I'm going to talk about but I will find something to focus on because it's quite easy Just let go, relax. And we all need sometimes to just close our eyes and fall asleep easily and naturally. And that's the thing about listening to somebody that's boring is there's no interest in what I'm going to say next. Because what I'm going to say next is going to be boring. There's no, no excitement or anticipation at all. It's just more of the same. It's just me talking and talking and it's just a bunch of words. It's just a bunch of somehow interconnected ideas forming thoughts and then verbalised in a, a vague format not really producing or creating anything meeting any kind of goal except the intention or feeling sleepy and calm could just fall asleep myself it would be so easy to just drift away I'm just on, on the verge really 
the birds are just drifting and I can always tell when I am there because I notice that the words start to appear slower than before and there is no connection between things that may have seemed as though they were connected. to feel so relaxed and there's a comfort Sometimes it's it's a comfort that maybe only comes with this sense of peace that you experience. some things that I like to do as I'm laying in bed and I do these and it's it's like a routine days I lay down and usually I lay down on my left side and if it's warm enough I'll have my right foot outside of the quilt tell myself internally that my body 
body is relaxed and that my mind is calm. body is relaxed. I tried to send my body there and my, my lips got stuck together. It ended up being my, my body. My, my mind is calm. is relaxed my mind is calm start to say, to say these things to myself. I breathe naturally. sleep naturally. I breathe safely. I sleep I sleep easily. And this is something So almost is what I was trying to say then. Instead of saying also, I meant almost. And then it turned out to be also, almost. But I probably could have just got away with it if I hadn't mentioned. So also almost. forgotten what I was going to say. It's almost become habitual. It just feels like the right thing to do. To say these things. As you're laying on your bed. Saying it inside your head. Some roses are red. I still got as an opportunity to make a pointless poem. If you 
is now all pains need to have a point. Although roses do have a point, they have quite a few. This session isn't really about roses or ridiculously bad poetry. This is about finding your own words that fit your own experience. that those words may mean to you. It means that you to experience more comfort allowing you to enjoy increased relaxation Muscles relaxed in your bones, relaxed in your skin, every part of your skin that covers your entire body. feeling relaxed and calm and all the internal also feel loose and relaxed and that sense of natural healing that takes place within your body increases that healing by a thousand percent so your whole body and mind experience 
senses, that sensation and feeling of healing and safety. Relaxation. Just in your brain, relaxing the different parts of your physical brain. And all the muscles. Appreciate yourself and all those wonderful qualities that you possess. You can feel good inside. go completely.
next time.